fitness is a big trend in gadgets and apps right now. But if you're trying to get in shape, can a fitness app and maybe a calorie counter do the job? Or should you go old school and get a real personal trainer? I decided to find out. I'm launching a month-long fitness challenge comparing an app called FitStar, which does personal training, and counting my calories with my fitness pal. Going up against FitStar is Allison. She's a personal trainer with multiple certifications and she'll also help me create a nutrition plan. I'll evaluate which trainer keeps me most motivated, accountable, and which works best for me in the long run. And of course, which one kicks my butt the most. I never do two workouts twice. Um, I'm always constantly changing the different things that I throw at my clients, different stresses that I throw at them, different exercises because really it'll get boring and it's not sustainable if there's not enough variety. It's your last time doing it. Allison seemed overwhelming at first. Her workouts were really scary and she sent me home with tons of cardio homework and this long food journal that was in a spreadsheet. Plus, each session with her is 100 bucks. Not sure I'm gonna be able to keep that up. So I just finished my first full session with Allison and I'm sweaty and starving and I've definitely underestimated how hard that workout was gonna be. It was fantastic, but I clearly have to up my game with FitStar because Tony Gonzalez is no Allison. Reverse shoulder roll. FitStar was easy and convenient from the get-go. The app is free or $40 a year. I chose the paid version to get more workouts, but I loved that you can do it anywhere, no gear required. That is sustainable. It's like the workout DVD, and the experience is very similar to that, but it's different every time, and it's different in a way that actually adapts to you. We wanted the experience to feel authentic and feel real, and we wanted to put real people on the screen, and having Tony's personality there really helps a lot. Good job. I like how the workouts include a variety of strength and cardio, and that you can specify your fitness level and rate each exercise in terms of how hard it is. I found that FitStar did progress over time, but it didn't really push me as hard as Allison did. And even though it reminds me to work out, it's still kind of easy to skip. Like, I totally ignored it when I went on vacation. Even though I kind of dreaded my workouts with Allison, I did not miss a single one. Plus, she was able to modify those workouts for this kind of nagging foot injury that I have, and that was great. She also held me very accountable for my food, my sleep, and my stress. I don't think that an app can take the place of human interaction. I think that they can be positive pieces of the puzzle, but I don't think it's gonna ever replace working with a trainer one-on-one. -on -one. You know, personal trainers provide a lot of things that are really hard to do with software. So what we're trying to do is provide that type of an experience in a way that's accessible to everyone uh, and, and really convenient. When I started this challenge, I hadn't really worked out in about a year. So if I were just getting started with only FitStar and MyFitnessPal, I would see progress, but it might be slow and I could get frustrated and give up. Allison was definitely a huge jumpstart in terms of getting back in shape, but one month with her was $400. Ouch. And ultimately, sticking with a workout plan is about creating good habits. So while Allison kicked my butt in the short term, in the long term, FitStar is the one that fits into my life. After that initial push, the app is where it's at.